most of what we've talked about over the past week, such as hair and jaws, mammary glands and limbs, these things mostly evolved over the past 500 million years or less. But we've also talked about animal evolution over a billion years. Insects and humans were both bilaterally symmetric. We have the right side and the left side are mere images of each other. And we both have heads. But here's a, here's a distant cousin. It's a sponge. It's not bilaterally symmetric and it doesn't have a head. So let's take a look at the time period from a billion years ago until 500 million years ago and see what interesting things evolved. Phylogenetic trees. Here's a phylogenetic tree of one billion years of animal evolution. Here we are, humans, humans and kangaroos di diverged about 160 million years ago. And we have frogs here and fish here, starfish and insects, jellyfish, sponges, and here are all the critters with heads. See, we have a head, I have a head, frogs have heads, flies have heads, <coughs> and they're vertebrate heads. And here are invertebrate heads. And then further down, all the way down to the origin of life, there are no heads. So we can divide things into, we can divide animals into critters with heads and critters with no heads. And here they are. But you might be asking yourself, what is that starfish doing there? Do star starfish don't look like they have heads, but clever biologists don't look at the adult forms, they look at the larvae of a starfish, and there you will see that the larvae has a head, and that's why starfish are put among the critters that have heads. So there you go, heads, starfish on the right. But what about vertebrates? Well, if you do, flies aren't vertebrates, and starfish aren't vertebrates, so they have to go over to the left when you divide things in between invertebrates and vertebrates. So let's look at this tree again. Here are the vertebrates, and here are the invertebrates all the way down. What that means is vertebrates evolved from invertebrates. Now one thing about vertebrates, an interesting detail, is that about 500 million years ago, our ancestors went through something called whole genome duplications. So you take the genome and you duplicate it. And then you take that genome and duplicate that. So that means that every gene has four copies of it. One gene does what, it's a, what it originally did, and then three are free to do whatever they want to do, and they evolve into all kinds of interesting uh, genes that can do and make things like feet and, I don't know, hair <laughs> and nipples and etc. Also, look at the bony fish, the teleos. They went through an even another uh, whole genome duplication later on. So let's look, here's the animal tree. Here are the vertebrates. And vertebrates are a member of this thing called chordata. There are three main groups of chordata. The vertebrates, the urochordata, that's a C squared on the right, and then a cephalochordata, best known for this one example called a, a lancelet. Now, chordata are also part of a larger group called deuterostomes. There they are. And then as, that's as opposed to protostomes here. So what, is, what does that mean, protostomes and deuterostomes? What in the world does that mean? Well, biologists look at the fertilization. And you see, if you're an insect, if you're a protostome, when you get fertilized, your egg cells divide into two, then four. And when it's eight, it looks like the, the cell on the, on the right. And then that ball of cells eventually gastrulates and forms a blastopore, a, a hole at the bottom. And that hole later becomes the mouth of the insect. A second hole that forms even later becomes the anus. The point is, though, that the first hole, the protostome, the first hole becomes the mouth. And the second hole forms the anus. Now, that's for insects. What about people and fish? We are deuterostomes. We go through fertilization, eight cells, then we form this blastopore. That's the first hole at the bottom. That eventually turns into our anus, and the second hole becomes the mouth. And the, notice that it's connect, the mouth and the anus are connected through the gastrointestinal tract. The whole point of deuterostome means the first hole forms the anus. The deutero is second hole forms mouth, deuterostome. So that's a very deep division in animals. Now here's a cartoon from Punch Magazine, 1882, and it says, man is but a worm. Here's a picture of Darwin, 
and they were kind of upset by Darwin's theory because it implied that man is but a worm. Here and you can see in the lower left are the letters C-H-A-O-S, chaos. And out of this chaos comes a worm, and this worm evolves over thousands and millions of years and turns into a primate, and it goes around counterclockwise like a clock, and then it turns into a primitive man, and then it turns into an Englishman, and Darwin is watching this whole process uh, like God in the Sistine Chapel. Man is but a worm. Well, what about worms? Where do worms fit in on this, in this animal tree? Well, the ancestor of old Deuterostomes seems to have been a worm, and the ancestor of the Bilaterians was worm-like. So that means that our ancestors were worm-like, and here are a lot of what our cousins who resulted from those worm-like ancestors, and many of them just stayed worms. Unlike us, we don't, think cons we don't consider ourselves to be a worm, but really we are. So here's a variety of worms, and they're all kinds of different kinds. Now that means that if you draw a tree of animals down a, earlier on, where everything is a worm, and then we have bilateria, that's us and fish, for example, and we have worm-like ancestors. So bilateria evolved from worm-like ancestors. So in some sense, we can say that bilateria are a kind of worm, or we are a kind of worm, much like we said that we are a kind of fish in the earlier talks. So what about the word bilateral? Bilateral means that you have mere symmetry between one side and the other. And uh, for example, in this uh, fly's head, see, it's a per nice bilateral symmetry. And this is due to some homeobox genes. And you can divide all biology very nicely between, all animals rather, between non-bilateral and bilateral things. And bilateral bodies evolved from non-bilateral bodies. And that is a deep division that we can put on all of our beautiful cousins around us in the biosphere. Will aliens have heads? Will they be bilaterally symmetric? Will they be tubes like we are, a tube that goes from our mouths to our anus? So here's a tube. Will they be deuterostomes like we are? Or will they be protostomes like insects? Or will they even be animals at all?